Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditation, where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the Daily Office Lectionary. Today for Wednesday, let's take a look at the lesson that's assigned for evening prayer, the second lesson, and that's from the 12th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, beginning at the 31st verse. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto man. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the treasure of his heart, will bring forth good things, and an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. And he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, but there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment of this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. While he yet talked to the people, Behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. And he said unto them, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. And he answered and said unto them that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Okay, so we, at the end there, of course, we hear about Jesus and his kinsfolk are coming to Jesus. And in the midst of all this important teaching, uh, he points out that we all become members of the family, right? The body of Christ by actually hearing the word and following it. And, and so all that comes before that is a testimony of that. Now, uh, there was a man who used to come around once in a while uh, for weekday things, uh, and we had very interesting conversations. He was a young man who was struggling with this idea of a sin against the Holy Spirit. He was just so absolutely sure that something he had done in his life, which he did not share with me, was the sin against the Holy Spirit that prevented him from being forgiven. And I said, the fact that you have that sense of, of contrition, that you have an understanding that something went wrong, tells me that it may be God, the Holy Spirit himself, who's moving you to that repentance, and therefore what you did was not necessarily an unforgivable sin, that God can forgive ridiculously large amount of sin and what we would consider otherwise very grievous sin. Um, and and go, he goes through to talk about all of that. But at the same time, with the forgiveness comes the amendment of life, right? And, and that's why he gives that little example of um, of the emptying the house, right? The, the demons are cast out, you clean the house. It doesn't stay empty, right? You need to fill your soul back up when you bur unburden yourself of the sin because God has forgiven you. Then you need to fill that with the goodness and the virtue and the type of living that Jesus desires for us to live, right? So we, we just, we both get rid of the sin by repenting and, and receiving God's forgiveness for it. Uh, but we also then 
amend our lives. We have contrition, we have sorrow for sin, and we purpose amendment of life. We want to change and we strive to live with the virtues replacing the vices. So anyway, all important stuff for us. Uh, so today is Wednesday. Um, we have a Dawson clergy conference today in Ann Arbor, so that we won't have services today uh, at St. John's Church, because I will be uh, heading off to Ann Arbor shortly. Uh, but please do keep us in our, your prayers, and I will be praying for you, uh, asking God to bless all those who are watching these morning meditations. And may God give you a wonderful Wednesday full of blessings.